Welcome to Relocating to Disney. Well, today we're going to be talking about how do you prepare for hurricane season. Hurricane season in Florida lasts from June 1st until November 30th. So I'm going to give you just a few tips to make it a little bit easier for you to be, be prepared for hurricanes each season. So I'm going to start off here in the pantry. Now our pantry is kind of full right now because we've got it fully stocked. But this is just a simple thing you can do. And what uh, we do is this top shelf here is what we call our hurricane food. And it's non-perishable food. So in June, we stock up and we buy a whole bunch of extra things. You can see there's extra boxes of crackers, things like that. Um, and so we put it all up there. And if we have a hurricane, we'll, we'll consume it. And if we don't, then come November 30th, we eat it then. So it's uh, buying some extra groceries at the beginning of the season and then using those groceries at the end of the season. So you want to make sure you get non-perishable foods, things like crackers and peanut butter and things like that. Um, they also recommend canned goods, but you have to think about how are you going to warm up that can, those canned goods. If you have a grill with propane, well, that makes it a little bit easier for you. And you also want to make sure that you get something that's going to be fun. Because, you know, it all just can't be sitting in the dark eating saltines. So get some of your favorite foods as well. Maybe some cookies or, or some kind of treat that you can have to make it a little bit more bearable. Let's take a look at the next simple recommendation that we have. And that is that you need a place where your family can go. It's an interior room with no windows and um, no outside walls. Thus an interior room. So for us, we have this closet behind us. Now, right now the closet is filled with storage, but we've designed this closet so that we can very quickly and easily pull out the totes out of this room, line the room with chairs, and then we can sit in there comfortably. We can, there's room for the dog, works out very good. That walk-in closet is perfect. Now we've also stocked that walk-in closet with things that we might need during an emergency. Let me show you. So again, this is our storage closet. So it has in it storage items like you would expect, but in a disaster, it comes in real handy. So we've got a couple of bottles of water just in case we get in here and somebody's thirsty. And uh, we've got drawers down here and we have batteries. We've got uh, some wash mitts, first aid kits and band-aids. We have uh, suntan lotion, um, some rain ponchos, and uh, we have some LED lanterns in here, some candles, um, with some candles in the back, uh, lighters there, and uh, some batteries and, and some things in case we need them. And if I continue on down, there's just more and more supplies that we might need in case a disaster hit. We also have all of our backpacks up here. These backpacks are what we might use if we go, were to go to Disney, but it makes it real easy if we've got to leave, we can just toss a bunch of things in these backpacks and get out of here. Here's something else. These are collapsible water jugs, right? So they don't take up a lot of room, but you can fill them full of water in case you need them. So that's real handy. The things to think about during a hurricane is uh, number one, the surge coming in from uh, the ocean, but we're in the center of the state, so that's not a concern for us. Next, it's wind and rain. And uh, what usually comes from that is the power is gonna get knocked out uh, for maybe up to seven days. So having some battery operated fans, this would go around your neck or you can uh, adjust these and set them on a table. Uh, that becomes helpful. Another thing is, uh, you know, we live and die by our cell phones now. So having a nice collection of batteries to keep them charged up and making sure these are powered up and ready to go uh, is, is something else that comes in handy. Well, we've talked about the simple things. Let's talk about what you're going to do when you hear that a hurricane is approaching. Again, think high winds, think of, of a lot of rain. And here we are at the pool. Now, if this pool overflows, it's going to run across this deck and get to the drain, and then the drain 
will exit the water out of this lanai area. However, heavy rain, that could easily become overwhelmed and we could see this whole lanai area filled with water. So an easy uh, fix to kind of reduce that chance is you take your pool and you can lower it a few inches. So if you think, um, you know, you might be getting six to eight inches of rain coming in, well then just drop this a little bit, maybe four inches. Um, you don't want to interfere with the proper workings of the pool um, because you still want it to be able to circulate and everything, but drop it a reasonable amount. The next thing you want to do is uh, the hurricane is coming. They've given you a projection. It's going to be here in a few days. This is the great time now to get all of your furniture that's outside and get it moved inside to the garage or wherever you can take it. Some people will take it and, and throw it inside the pool. Um, that can lead to corrosion. So uh, just be careful doing that. Not just corrosion of the furniture, but you could be adding metals to the pool that are very difficult to get out of the water once it's in there. So be very careful putting <laughs> furniture in the pool itself. But uh, if you can get it inside, that's where you want it. Big pieces of furniture, like perhaps this table right here, um, that we're just going to shove up against the wall um, and that should take care of uh, anything like that. So think about that for large pieces of furniture that you don't want to be moving around. And pretty much anything that you want to keep, you want to get it inside. So you can see on the wall here, we've got this turtle hanging there. Um, if we don't move that inside, I know it's going to become airborne because even right now during windy storms, that, I'm concerned that thing's going to fall off. So uh, that'll, that'll be going inside. Next, keep your trees maintained. Keep them well pruned. Now for a couple of different reasons. Here we are in the lanai and this tree blowing around is going to be hitting the screen and slicing it up. But if I turn just a little bit here, you'll see we got a nice uh, pine tree out there. If limbs come off of that, start flying around, or if it tips over, it could land on something. So if you've got trees uh, around your house, just make sure you're keeping them well pruned and you won't have a problem. So I just want to clarify, I am in central Florida. I'm not out at the ocean and I would be giving you much different advice if I was closer to the ocean. Behind me is an example of another tree. Uh, this one grows like crazy. If you've seen my other videos, you know that, uh, everything that was green that appears on this tree right now, uh, at, in the springtime, it was bare. It was just a, just a trunk coming up and nothing else, but that's the way these trees are. Um, and so you, you have to do an assessment of all your trees to see how they could be banging against windows or not. Here's something else is you will hear people say, oh, you got to board up your windows. Okay, if you're out by the ocean, sure, you probably should. The reason you'd want to board up your windows is because if uh, the wind is blowing around debris, let's say it's blowing around a tree or a two by four, that is going to become a missile that can go right through your window. <laughs> okay, if you have a traditional window, that's going to be a huge problem. So you want to check and see if you've got hurricane glass windows. Building code in Florida requires it, but if you've got an older home, you might not have hurricane glass windows. Now what the hurricane glass windows will do is they'll withstand the pressure of high winds, and if something does strike the window, it won't shatter. So if you have hurricane glass windows, you probably don't need to board them up. You just have to be ready. If they were to break, you may have to replace them. So since we heard the hurricane was coming, what we've been doing is just cleaning up the garage uh, so we can get the van pulled in here um, and that should uh, protect it. So it might be a good idea to think about that if you've got a garage, see if you can get uh, one or two of your vehicles pulled in there. Keep in mind that the electricity may be out for up to seven days. So how are you gonna survive in the heat without electricity? Well, I showed you the battery operated fans Here's something else that you might want to uh, purchase. And these are the instant cold packs, chemical cold packs that you can use to um, get a little relief. You can see the tables behind me and it's right up against the wall and that's going to be perfect. It's gonna give a little protection for that window as well. So let's talk for a moment about water because this is something that uh, you'll hear all about and there'll be a run on water. In fact, 
uh, we visited some stores just to see what the run would look like. And four days out, people were out of water. My son works at a store and he said it was a madhouse in the store until they ran out of water and toilet paper and then everything calmed down. So that gives you an idea how far in advance the craziness begins. So what do you need for water? Well, they say you need one gallon per person per day. Now, what's the chance that if you're in central Florida, the water is going to get shut off? Probably not going to happen. There could be a boil advisory that comes out. You have to deal with that. Um, if you have a swimming pool, you don't have to worry about having water to flush your toilets because you got a full pool that you can use. You're not going to go in the pool. You're going to use the pool water to flush the toilets. And uh, uh, the, so what I'd recommend is just at the beginning of hurricane season, purchase an extra couple of cases of water just to have. And at the end of hurricane season, drink them. That's what we do. So uh, we don't have to be part of the mad rush uh, to go get the water because we already have it. We bought it a long time ago. So we thought it'd be fun to come here to BJ's and just take a look at uh, some of the activities going on here, getting ready for the hurricane that's supposed to be landfall in three or four days. That's the line for propane tanks to be refilled. So I expected the store to be mobbed. It really isn't. They are all out of water. I was really, you know, hoping to see something entertaining and uh, haven't seen it yet. Well, we're three or four days out and out of water, low on toilet paper, and a line to get the propane tanks filled. All right, and uh, looking over there at the gas station, line to get gas as well. But overall, not too crazy in there. Well, here I am in the garage sitting next to my generator. It's a little tiny generator, but it's enough to run the refrigerator and maybe a little bit more. Now, this will run a refrigerator for four hours, at least four hours, on a gallon of gas. So a little bit more over my shoulder is the gas can, okay? Five gallon gas can. I've got two of those filled. That means at least 20 hours of running that refrigerator. Now, the refrigerator doesn't have to be running for straight 20 hours. If I've got five days I'm out of electricity, I'm going to ration out how often... I flip on the fridge to cool it back down. But talking about gas, that's an important thing. You want to make sure that you fill your cars up with gas and make sure they're topped off. Now, there's gonna be a lot of other people out there wanting to fill up their cars and fill up their gas tanks and their gas cans as well. So uh, expect some of these gas stations to run out of fuel. So plan ahead. Well, that's it for preparing for a hurricane. Thank you for watching.